Hello guys, today let me show you how easy it is to write a calculator in C program. But before I show you the code, let, let's take a look at this first. Hey everyone, now I'm back with another amazing video tutorial. So if you don't want to miss any of my new videos, make sure to like, share, subscribe, and click that bell icon for you to always be updated with my latest video tutorials. Alright, so we're going to design a calculator incrementally. So we're going to follow the good structured programming that requires each function to only to do only one thing. And here is the the given, the given problem again, write a program that uses a menu to allow the user to add, subtract, multiply, or divide two integers. In short, a calculator. So we're going to break down, we're going to have this, we're going to create multiple functions for this. So first we, so first in this program we are going to have four different things. First, we must ask the user what function is desired. Then we need to, number two, get the data from the operation. And three, make the calculation. And finally, four, print the result. So these four processes are, are called functions in main. So we're going to use uh, these functions. So let's go, let's go ahead and open our editor. And the same process as before, this file and then file again, save as. And we're going to name this calculator. Let's see. So I'm going to write the program first, and after completing the the, the program, I will going to discuss this one by one. So let's analyze this uh, program first before we proceed to the next uh, function. So we apply the same approach that we used previously. So in main we call the get option in here in our main function. Oops. So in our main function we get the option get option function just before returning. We then print the option and then we reprint it in the main so that we can easily verify the result. So in our get function, here it, is, here it is. So we have the menu that will be shown on our screen to the user. So now we are ready to add another function. So our third function is calculate function or calc. And this is the first example of sub function that calls other sub functions like add, subtract, multiply, and divide. So we're going to write sub functions for that. And we'll be using a switch statement to select the correct sub function. In place of the actual calls, we return a dummy values like 1.0 for add, 2.0 for sub subtract. 3.0 for multiply and 4.0 for divide or division. Let's go ahead and do that now. So we're going back here at the top in the function declarations. We're going to add another function.
so here is the second function that we added so once again note how we verify both the downward and upward communication so the calculate function or the calc function displays the parameter values it receives and the result before it returns in a main the value that was returned is displayed so here it is in our main we have updated our main to so take a take a good closer look so before we can begin to write the sub functions we must run four more tests just to make sure that it's it's really working so one for subtract one for multiply and two for divide to test divide we must first test it with a zero div divisor and then with a valid divisor so again I have updated this function as well to get option function I have removed the last printf function since it was just for debugging for testing and also in here I have put the return twice for debugging purposes for testing purposes so let's go ahead and run this first before we proceed to the next functions so here is the program so it doesn't have any errors so let's try one for add and so let's go ahead and do that now let's go ahead and back to the top again add additional function declarations in here So here is our added newly added functions the float the add function and subtraction functions so we still put this in the statement for debugging for testing purposes so we have these statements to make sure that our code doesn't have any errors or to check if if it's going to run properly so note how we display the results of the program to the main this verifies that upward communication is correct if there should be a problem we will know exactly where it is occurred because of our techniques of these because of these techniques so let's go ahead and save and run this compile and run again and as you can see I don't have any errors that's good so let's go ahead and try insert a number let's try this time let's this time let's try subtract insert two numbers same number as before 13 and 8 so in calculator input is 2388 and and it's still the same okay so I, as you can see here the result is not correct so we will be able to know exactly where the error is because of our debugging technique or so as you can see in here if you notice in our add function we have this formula to get the to get the sum get the sum of a plus b in here we we don't have that so that's our problem we just need to add it here so def is equal to a minus b and that's it so return diff to so control s to save and run it again 
So let's try subtract again. 2 for subtraction and 13, 8. So let's go ahead and check our codes. And let's go back up here to the calculate function. So this one here, we can remove this now. So just the this, this switch results result option so okay so here is our error so instead of putting this number we can now update this and call the sub function add num1 and num2 that's why I'm not able we're not able to get the right answer because of these error so we just need to update so case one is going to be add so let's uh, check our codes again let's go back to the calculate function so okay I think here is the problem so num1 it, it, this should be num1 instead of num2 num2 so just need to change this so my bad I made a mistake in here for passing the values make sure to double check your code so num1 num2 num1 and num2 okay I think that's good let's run it again save compile and run and let's try subtraction again 13 and 8 and this time we get the right answer so 13 minus 8 is equal to 5 so in in the sub in the sub function we get 5 which is correct in calculator function we get 5 and in the main function we still get 5 so that's how you check for errors so you don't have to worry if you're making a lot of mistakes that's part of learning it's part of programming so just find a way to debug your code and here, this is the best way to debug it that's all for now i hope that you have enjoyed watching and learned something in this video if you have something to say about this video please don't hesitate to leave a comment below once again this is non-stop coding tutorial Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video.